Elon Musk, SpaceX, Mars Link connects Martians. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have the beginnings of some really awesome fireside. So smoky. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today, we're talking Martians. I guess it'd be a space day. We've been talking about SpaceX and Elon Musk confirming that they are creating or working on a Mars link. Now, I've spoke to you guys about this many, many months ago, and I predicted this was going to happen, and it seems this will come into fruition. So, I was reading an article about this. I want to go through that with you. And then, of course, I'll give you my commentary. And then finally, I want to hear from you down below. As I always say, your thoughts are more important than mine. <laughs> down here, put your thoughts. What do you think? What do you think about all this? What do you think about what's going on with SpaceX and Elon Musk and how advanced this system is starting to get and the possibility of being able to communicate with Martians? A Martian could be you or I just actually living on Mars. So... This is really interesting to me because it's going to push the limits of SpaceX's Starlink also, because that's going to be the base that this is built upon. So I'm excited about this, and I'll give you some really good examples before the end of this video that will give you a little bit of food for thought and maybe a little point for discussion. Once again, down below, if you don't want to put something down there because you're shy, that's perfectly fine. Put an emoji. I don't care what kind of emoji, put a alien or a spacecraft or maybe a poop emoji. I don't care what it is. Put something down there just so I know that you're here and you actually watch the video. That would be much so appreciated. So before we jump into this article, I just want to say that if you enjoy the video, throw it a thumbs up. That's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, Click this little notification button here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Also, the most important thing that you can do if you want to help the channel is share. Share the video. Share all the videos. There is thousands of videos. I have over 360 videos specifically on SpaceX Starlink that I put together for you. I'll put a playlist right over here too. Don't click on that until we're done with this video. Click on that after and you'll find, once again, a ton of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it, because this channel has always been about the why. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here YouTube gave to us. Thank you, YouTube, appreciate that. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So now that the housekeeping is done, let's jump right into this article. Once again, I'll give you my commentary. And then finally, I wanna hear from you down below or an emoji, doesn't matter, either way. <laughs> SpaceX is planning a Starlink-like satellite network called MarsLink around Mars. This network aims to maintain a stable data flow between Earth and Mars, essential for Elon Musk's vision for a permanent human presence on Mars. Other companies like Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin have also proposed Mars communication systems, showing NASA's commitment to partnering with commercial entities for Mars exploration. Details and Significance SpaceX proposed a Mars Link constellation to NASA, introducing the idea at a Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group meeting. The Mars Link constellation would consist of multiple satellites orbiting Mars, creating a, quote, full visibility and interoperability for ground and orbital assets on the planet. Very interesting. It will use Starlink's advanced laser communications, providing data relay speeds at 4 megabits per second or higher across the vast 1.5 astronautical units or AU distance between Earth and Mars. This network could support real-time data transmission, including images and streams, benefiting both orbital and surface operations on Mars. Data transfer times. 
When Mars and Earth are at their closest, approximately 54.6 million kilometers, laser-based data communications would take about 182 seconds, just over three minutes, for a one-way transmission. When Mars is at its furthest, around 401 million kilometers, that delay increases to approximately 22 minutes each way. This network would help streamline these communications despite the vast distances. Competitive proposals. NASA has also reviewed other contenders for a Mars communication network. Blue Origin's Blue Ring, they call it, offers data relay and refueling capabilities with in-space cloud computing and logistics support. Lockheed Martin proposed a repurposed MAVEN spacecraft, which was originally launched in 2013 to study Mars's atmospheric evolution. This interest from multiple companies highlights NASA's willingness to leverage commercial partnerships for sustainable Martian exploration. SpaceX's Elon Musk confirmed Mars Link's development on social media, stating it's the foundational step towards faster, high-capacity data transfer between Earth and Mars. His ultimate vision includes petabit per second connectivity to support not only data flow, but also potential human habitant on Mars. The Mars Link network represents a vital first step in supporting SpaceX's ambitious goals for Mars exploration and signals NASA's openness to collaboration with innovative commercial players in the space industry. That is true. But how can Lockheed Martin or Blue Origin compete with SpaceX? That's a whole nother thing. So I think this is awesome. Now, I spoke about this once again 40 plus months ago. I said, listen, we're going to have a Starlink network around Earth. This network will form a mesh network of sorts with laser communication between all of them. So what that means is data from this satellite could be the same data that is on the other side of the planet in a split second. No, milliseconds. OK, because once again, they are all as one, just like we would have a mesh network in our home. It doesn't matter which AP or access point you connect to. It's all the same data. Right? The same thing holds true with SpaceX Starlink with all of the new satellites. When I say new, those are version 1.5s and version 2.0 minis. The version 1s didn't have that laser communication on board. Those are going to go the way of the dinosaur, the way of the dodo bird. We're going to see a lot of them in the sky burning up in not so distant future. So. The version 2s are the most powerful currently, but version 3s are right around the corner once Starship launches. And they can use their PEZ dispenser to launch hundreds of these at a time, which will be massive. Because those version 3s will have 10 times the capacity and they'll be about four times as big. They are much larger, all right? so. What do we need to be able to hit petabit data speeds? I also talked about this. I said, not only are we going to have a mesh network around Earth, but we will have a mesh network around Mars also. Now, the two mesh networks will be able to communicate with each other through lasers, but photons slow down, all right? Even though data is traveling at the speed of light, it is not infinite. It will slow down and finally degrade, just like all light does. OK, so what do we need to be able to propagate this? Think about it, guys. We need repeaters, just like with a mesh network. If you're in one part of your home and the other part is not getting good signal, if you get a little repeater and plug it into the wall, well, guess what? You're going to have good signal now on the other side of the house. The same thing holds true here. If we are able to put repeaters in between Earth and Mars, maybe every third of the way, maybe every 25% of the way, maybe have four of them, maybe have 10 of them, right? And have these repeaters. What that will allow us to do is have data coming from Mars, hit a repeater, then the next repeater, and then the next repeater until finally the data gets to Earth. What is good about that is every time it gets the information at the repeater, now it blasts that data off with the same strength of the original. Now, how do we do it? How is that even possible? Well, they're going to need gigawatt lasers, not the lasers that they're currently using, gigawatt. The only way to be able to have that kind of power 
And that type of computing power, because remember, it needs to cipher and decipher the data and then re-encode it and fire it off, right? It needs to be able to do these checks and balances. If not, if you get an error, you don't want to wait 22 minutes to get the replacement data because there were some data errors in it. You don't want that. So it needs to do these checks and balances. So it's going to have to be larger, more powerful, and it's going to have to be driven by something other than solar. It's just not going to be enough energy. So I'm going to propose, I'm going to say in this video that these satellites, these repeater satellites will be nuclear driven. Okay, they just have to be. All right, so we've had many satellites going off out of our solar system that run the exact same way. So I think that's what will end up happening. But having these repeaters will allow for us to keep those speeds at maximum from repeat to repeat to repeat to repeat until it hits Mars or until the data hits Earth, either which way, bi-directional. The other thing is, is we need to up our game when it comes to data compression and, of course, processing. The algorithms are going to have to become better, right? That's just simply it. Because we're going to need to have this data as small as possible, okay, to be able to push a petabit of data from Earth to Mars or from Mars to Earth. Also, I think that the ground stations are going to have to change. Because, think about it. If you're getting information coming to you via light, there's no reason for a satellite here on Earth to take that light data and then convert it into RF, radio frequency, and push it down through the satellite to a receiver here, to a dish. That would make no sense. So I'm going to guess, I'm going to propose that they will have some type of pop or point of presence or ground station that is laser based. So meaning it will have a laser, a direct communication with the satellites using lasers. Okay, I, that's the only way I can see it, to be able to keep these speeds up, right? You don't want to go fiber and then all of a sudden into copper, right? If you're on fiber, make everything fiber channel network, correct? Same thing holds true here. You don't want everything coming to you via laser at the speed of light, and then all of a sudden you slow it down because you're using RF. That makes no sense at all. So that's why I think that that's probably going to be the way it happens. Once again, they're going to need some type of photon amplification, you're gonna to need to amplify that signal somehow because it does degrade over time or over space, over distance, right? So by having those repeaters in between Earth and Mars, I think would really work out well. So once again, you would have that mesh network like we already have around Earth. You would have a mesh network around Mars and then you would have repeater cells, you'd have repeaters in between the two planets and I think there's only two ways to be able to do this because remember, Mars is here, Earth is here, and they do this kind of thing, right? Sometimes they're really close, once again, three minute communication, and then sometimes they're far apart, all right? 22 minute communication. Well, as they're going around each other, you would need to have these repeaters all the way around, okay? Or those repeaters have to circle around Mars so they stay the exact same perfect line between Mars and Earth. Having multiple will probably be the way to go, but it's up to them how they end up doing it. But remember, the fastest line is a straight line, right? Not a curved line. You want to go and send the data directly from Earth to Mars or from Mars to Earth. So I think this is fascinating, absolutely fascinating. We will be able to communicate with Martians, and those Martians might be you or I. It's possible, right? One day we will see humans on Mars and they will be called Martians, which is just, you know, back coming from a Star Trek type of growing up back in the 70s, hearing that is just baffling to me, absolutely baffling. And a lot of the stuff that we saw in Star Trek, even Star Wars, right, they're happening today. All those communication things where you'd see the people and all this stuff, people would be like, that's, that's absolutely not possible. Now, it's just like second, it's just like everyone has it. Everyone has their phone, they're doing FaceTime, they're shooting pictures, they have full communications, they also have the entire cyclopedia in their hands. That's why kids today, if they're not absolutely geniuses, they're freaking lazy. Because all of the answers are right here, for the most part. Just look them up. <laughs> Anyways, I digress, as I always do. I want to know what you think about all of this. Do you think this is pretty cool? I know I do. Down below, let's have this discussion. How do you think that they should do it? Is anything that I've said ring a bell? Does any of it hold water? 
Or do you think that I'm kind of wet behind the ears and you might have a better idea? Let's talk about it down below. Or once again, throw an emoji down there so I know that you got to the end of this video. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it. Sharing this video will help out a lot. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. You can find my shirts like this one, Megabit. You can find this shirt as well as my books and my tees and everything else. Pick something up. I would really appreciate it. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you on Mars. Take care, guys.